Do you get frustrated when people continue to drop problem after problem at your feet? If so, what would you say if I told you that your problems are the keys to your success? Problems are, in fact, an opportunity. Problems are an opportunity to optimize your team and your business. Today, I'm going to explain how. Let's dive in. Too many leaders wish they didn't have any problems. Others bitch about their challenges like it's some life sentence, and others just ignore their problems hoping they'll eventually go away, except they never do. My question today is this, how do you go from a good to a great leader? Start by optimizing your team and your business. If you want to contribute more and make a larger impact, you must fall in love with your problems. Your problems are a blessing. A problem is an opportunity to optimize what isn't working. Let me give you three examples, the last of which is the most important. Hearing the first two examples will make the third one much more impactful. The first example I will call the problem child, right? Everyone at some point will have a problem child on their team. Don't run from them. Instead, embrace them because they're a gift. I was talking to one leader recently who was raving about an amazing employee and complaining about his, quote, problem child. I told him the great employee he was bragging about was easy to manage. The problem child, on the other hand, was his greatest gift. He was like, what? I then asked him a profound question. I said, what would you say if I told you ahead of time that a difficult employee was about to grace your path but they're being sent your way to make you a better leader. This employee would help you become more articulate, define clear expectations, and sharpen your overall leadership. I asked if that would change his perspective about the employee. He eventually broke the silence and said, yeah, it would. The problem child is going to help you become a better leader. The second example is one I will call the CSAT issue. Like a problem child, everyone eventually runs across a customer satisfaction issue. Most people get frustrated when a client throws a fit about something not working. Many let the situation drain all their energy. One leader I know recently complained about a CSAT issue with one of their clients. Without question, the situation was complex and something that wouldn't be solved quickly. I asked the same question. What would you say if I told you ahead of time that a challenging client situation was about to grace your path, but this situation was being sent your way to make you a better leader, to improve your customer, your company's processes, and enhance your customer service experiences. I asked if that would change their perspective about the CSAT issue. The leader smiled and said, yeah, I never thought of it that way. CSAT issues are an opportunity to optimize your customer service. It's also an opportunity to build long-term relationships with your clients. When customers are unhappy that something is not working as intended, they understand that it will take some effort to resolve. What they want to know is this, that, you're, that they're not alone. They want reassurance that you and your team are in the boat helping them solve the problem. The problem client will also make you a better leader by helping you optimize your services. Perspective. The problem is not the problem. The problem is how we think about the problem. Problems lead to incredible learning opportunities. Problems give you experience and wisdom. Problems are an opportunity to optimize your team and your business. The last example is the most profound. I will call this one the all is good example. Let me explain. I asked one leader I ran into at a networking event recently, how was going? His response was, all is good. I haven't had any problems in a while, so I can't complain. I was like, wow, that's cool. Do you really have no problems? He was like, yep, all is good. I then asked him, what's next? His response was, right now, nothing. I just wanna, I just wanna enjoy the moment. Nothing I said, right, 
that's interesting. I, I was just like, oh, that's really interesting. I then asked a question differently. I said, okay, since I knew him well, I said, where do you want the business to be next year at this time? His response was, well, keep growing, of course. We, we just got to keep doing what we're doing and we'll be all right. Now, I want to compare that conversation with a C-level leader I work with. While both are C-level executives, this one had a different variation on the all's good comment. I'll refer to this variation as all's good, but we still have work to do. So I asked the same question, how's it going? His response was crazy good, Riff. Like, we're on a roll. We just promoted three people into leadership positions. We, we rolled out new service offering that our team and clients are excited about and solved a major issue at our largest client. I could go on and on with the good news, but that's not what I want to talk to you about. Instead, I want to workshop some ideas with you. Like the previous example, I asked, okay, what's next? He was like, how much time do you have? We have so many things to discuss. And since I'm beginning to, to think about next year, I want to review, like, I want to start reviewing the org structure with you and discuss some changes I need to make. And I also want to figure out how to retain our best people. Everyone's good spot, but I want to ensure we don't lose every, anyone, so I need your help. I want to also discuss getting some of them into your leadership program, and I, and I want your input on the agenda for an upcoming executive meeting. Where should we start? Do you see the difference? Right? Let me be clear. If you want to grow your business, you must always be optimizing your business. The businesses that transition from good to great are led by leaders who embrace problems. And when everything is going well, they anticipate those that need solving. They're obsessed with optimizing their team and the business. They embrace change. They look to improve things and they ask their leaders who work for them to do the same. Let me ask you, how will you optimize your business in the year ahead? Do you have the right leadership team around you? Is your vision being communicated throughout the business? Are any of your key leaders at risk? These are just some questions that every leader needs to ask. Why? Because this is how great leaders optimize their business. If you want more leadership insight like what I shared today, I'd love to buy you a copy of my book, Freedom to Experiment. How to ignite a new level of energy, focus, and momentum in yourself and your team. Just follow the link in the description and I'll personally sign a copy for you. If you're tired of being buried in the weeds, right? I invite you to schedule a call and I'll show you how to transform your leaders into growth champions to free up time to focus on doing what you love, which is actually growing the business. I put a link in the description for that as well. Okay, if you like what I shared today, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up, share a comment related to your business, and of course, subscribe because each week I'm sharing content to help you and your team embrace change, focus your efforts, and accelerate results. Remember this, you're just one idea away. We'll talk to you soon.